Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about a common condition, acne vulgaris, which in layman's term called pimples. So acne means eruption and vulgaris means common. Acne vulgaris is a common eruption that occurs when hair follicles or pores get blocked by particles like dead skin cells or sebum. Once hair follicles are blocked, they form small raised bumps on the skin. Acne is common among teenagers because of the skin changes that happen during puberty. The prevalence of acne in adolescents has been reported to be as high as 95%, with a 20-35% to prevalence of moderate to severe acne. Acne may persist into adulthood in up to 50% of affected individuals. Quality of life issues are a very important concern for individuals, especially teenagers with acne. Depression, anxiety, and low self-esteem are more common in patients with acne. Pathophysiology So we're going to talk about the pathophysiology of acne. The pathogenesis of acne is complex, but there are several major factors that contribute to the development of acne lesion. <coughs> the first factor is creatine plugs. Hyperproliferation and adhesions of keratinocytes, hyperkeratosis, in the distal portion of the hair follicle creates a keratin plug, microcomedon. Keratin plugs can block the opening of the hair follicle. 2. Sebum Sebum is released by sebaceous glands in response to androgen production during puberty in both males and females. Sebum contributes to clogging up of the follicles and causes blockage. One keratin plus or sebum partially block the hair follicle, i.e. the hair follicle is still open to the surface of the skin, an open comedo is formed. Open comedones appear black, which we commonly call blackheads, because melanin gets oxidized when it is exposed to air and becomes dark in color. 3. Bacterial overgrowth Propionibacterium acne, an anaerobic lipophilic bacterium, is always living in the follicle. Normally, it does not cause problems as it is a part of normal skin flora. However, if this hair is completely blocked up by keratin or sebum, it creates a closed environment called a closed comedo. So basically, we have talked about three things, which are keratin, keratin plugs, then sebum, and bacterial overgrowth. These are three factors that contribute to the growth of acne. So let's look at the mechanism. As we all know that the levels of androgen increase during puberty, which lead to an increase in sebum production. This is the sebaceous hyperplasia. Due to increased sebum production, there is proliferation of propionibacterium acnes. There is protease production, hydrolysis of lipids into pro-inflammatory fatty acids. Due to all this, a pustule is formed. Then the other thing is, we talked about increased androgens and also there's genetic susceptibility. So there's pilosebaceous duct hypercornification, which leads to blockage of pilosebaceous duct. That will lead to the formation of comedones, and then this leads to the formation of inflammatory papules, and there's rupture of sebum into dermis, cytokine production, neutrophil recruitment, which leads to the formation of a pustule. So this is the diagram that's showing skin lesion. Clinical features. Acne presents in areas rich in sebaceous glands such as the face, back and sternal area. The three cardinal features are 1. Open comedones which we call blackheads or closed comedones which are whiteheads. So basically there is melanin in there but the open comedones once exposed to oxygen they actually turn black. 2. Not turn black basically they get darker. Two inflammatory papules, three pustules. The skin may be very greasy, seborrhea, rupture of the inflamed lesion may lead to deep-seated dermal inflammation and nodulocystic lesions which are more likely to cause facial scarring. A premenstrual exacerbation of acne is sometimes noticed. There is a tendency for spontaneous improvement over a number of years, but acne can persist unabated into adult life. So there are a number of clinical variants of acne, this infantile acne. Facial acne is occasionally seen in infants and is sometimes cystic. It is thought to be due to the influence of maternal androgens and resolves spontaneously. Steroid acne. Acne may occur secondary to corticosteroid therapy or Cushing syndrome. 
Clinically, the rash often appears as a pustular folliculitis on the trunk without comedones. Oil acne. This is an industrial disease seen in workers who have prolonged contact with oils or other hydrocarbons and is common on the legs and other exposed sites. Acne fulminans. This is a rare variant seen most commonly in young male adolescents. Severe necrotic encrusted acne lesions appear associated with malaise, pyrexia, arthralgia, and bone pain due to sterile bone cysts. It requires urgent treatment with oral prednisolone 30 to 40 mg daily and analgesics followed by a course of oral isotretinoin. Acne conglobata Cystic acne with abscesses and interconnecting sinuses. Acne excoriae Deeply excoriated and picked acne with associated scarring. It is much more common in females. Follicular occlusion triad This is a rare disorder most commonly seen in black Africans. It is characterized by the presence of severe nodular cystic acne, dissecting cellulitis of the scalp and hydrogenitis superativa. This may be caused by a problem of follicular occlusion. So these are the types of acne that you can see blackheads, whiteheads, papule, pustule, cystic and nodule. So as you can see the types of acne papules, they tended to touch bright red or pink. Nodule, hard pimples embedded deeply under the skin. Comedons, we have got black and white. Black are open comedons and whiteheads are closed comedons. Pustules, these are often yellow or white with redness at the base of the swelling. Cyst, severe form of acne when infection creates a red, painful or itchy bump full of pus. So what is the treatment of acne? Treatment is aimed at decreasing sebum production, decreasing bacteria, normalizing drug, drug keratinization and decreasing inflammation. As so basically treatment is based on the what on the cause so what did we say the causes were said that keratin plugs increase sebum production and overgrowth of propionibacterium acne so regular washing with acne soaps to remove excess grease is helpful normal soaps can be comedogenic picking should be discouraged so what is the first line therapy mild acne can response Respond to a variety of topical agents, e.g., keratolytics, benzoyl peroxide, azelaic acid, or topical retinoids, tretinoin or isotretinoin, or retinoid like agents, adapalene. Topical antibiotics, for example, atromycin or clindamycin, are used for inflammatory acne. All topical agents can cause problems with irritation. Second line therapy low dose oral antibiotic therapy. It often helps but must be given for at least 3 to 4 months. Oxytetracycline 500 mg twice daily is often used first. Menocycline 100 mg daily, erythromycin 500 mg twice daily, or trimethoprim 100 mg twice daily are also used. An extra treatment Ciproterone acetate 2 mg, ethinyl estradiol 35 micrograms. Co-ciprindol is of value in females if there is no contraindication to oral contraception. This acts as a normal combined contraceptive but has anti-androgen activity. It may take 6 to 8 months to have its maximum effect. There is an increased incidence of DVT, deviant thrombosis. Third line therapy. Third line treatment with an oral retinoid drug, isotretinoin should be given if the above measures fail. There is nodular cystic acne with scarring or there is severe psychologic disturbance. Use of retinoids, isotretinoin or acetretin. Retinoids are synthetic vitamin A analogs that affect cell growth and differentiation. They are very teratogenic. Isotretinoin is a hospital only drug in most countries due to its teratogenicity and is restricted to the use of dermatologists and a few trained family doctors. A number of physical techniques are currently under assessment such as lasers, blue light, microdermabrasion, but they are not as effective as isotretinoin and can be very expensive as repeat treatments are often needed. So that's all about acne vulgaris which are commonly known as pimples. If you like the video please like and subscribe. Thank you.